Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this isn't exactly a lesson so much as an example on how to do one of these problems. So I've pulled this particular problem out of your book. The uh, page in your book, unfortunately, I don't have the original, your copy of the book, but the page in the book is the one that looks kind of like this. It's the first of the graph conversions. So I figured I would show you guys how I would do one of these from start to finish to give you a sense of the whole process. Okay, so we've already got the graph transcribed on the board. That way you guys don't have to watch me draw it. Now we've got to collect our information. So step one, we cut the graph up into segments because we have to work with those segments. So first step, cut up the graph. Remember the criteria that we usually say? We want to cut up the graph based on a change of shape change of sign or crossing the axis. Now that last one, it's not strictly necessary for the purposes of what we're doing here, but uh, we're gonna do it anyway, just to be absolutely clear. So if we cut up the graph, uh, let's use red, then we're gonna get, here is one, here's two, here's three, good old four, and of course, five. And we're going to be working with these five areas. So we'll make a little list of all the different zones. Step two is going to be calculate the value, whatever that value is that you're looking for. In this particular case, we're looking for velocity. But if this was a velocity graph, we'd be looking for acceleration. In this case, we're going to calculate the slope, we'll say. That's nice and generic. Okay, <clears throat> calculating the slope of a line, well, hopefully you guys remember how that works. Slope is equal to delta y over delta x, and that's going to be true for all five of these. Well, sort of. I mean, number two, probably don't need to calculate that now, do we? Because that's just going to be slope is equal to zero. Okay, well, uh, let's do number one. We're going to get 60 minus zero over 10 minus zero going to give us good old six meters per second positive. We've already got two squared away. We'll do three now. So for three, we're going to end up with, let's see, final position is zero minus initial position, which is positive 60 over 30 minus 15. So we're going to take 60 divided by 15. I want to make sure I don't get it too wrong. Yeah, four. Is it plus? No, because it's a negative slope going down. So we'll make that a negative value. For section four, it should, should be about the same thing. Once again, we fill out the information. It's going to be final position of negative 40 minus initial position of zero. And that's 30 to 40. So 40 minus 30. So we're looking at 40 divided by 10, which is going to be minus 4 meters per second again. Now, that makes sense because realistically, this is one line going all the way from start to end. The reason I give the criteria of cut things if it crosses the axis more has to do with area calculations than slope. But uh, it's a good habit to get in anyway. Five, it's going to be negative 40 is the initial position minus zero over, what are we looking at here, 40, so 55 minus 40. So we're going to get 40 divided by 15 or so. So we're going to get positive 2.6 meters per second. It's positive because, of course, I'm subtracting a negative, and because I can clearly see this is a positive slope here. Okay, so we now have our information. These numbers are what we were going to need in order to do this. Our next step, our next step is what was based on page 39. What shapes are these going to be? How can I tell what's going to happen? Because when I start making my velocity time graph, I'm going to have a series of points that I can record, but I don't, all I have is dots. Dots doesn't tell me anything. So, Let's see what information we can collect. Now, uh, I'm going to need some board space, so I'm going to erase this, but we need to collect this information in a way that's going to be 
useful to us. So I'm going to put it uh, down here in the form of a table. So we're going to go with the time, and we're going to say what the velocity is at that time. So for example, from time 0, the velocity was just 0. At time 10, we got the velocity as plus 6. At 15, we were at 0 again. 30, we were at negative 4. Same with 40. And then finally, at 55 seconds, we were at positive 2.6 meters per second. So now that we've got that done, we can erase this, get a little extra space. And now is when we have to work things out. Because you see, every one of the shapes that we had on the position graph is going to have a corresponding shape on the velocity graph. And the trick is, of course, that they're not directly comparable, but there is a pattern to them. So what we'll do here, uh, let's see. We'll do segments. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. On the position graph, we had a positive slope, a flat line, a negative slope, a negative slope, and a positive slope. So those were the general shapes that we saw on our graph. But what are we going to get on our velocity graph? Well, if you check in your booklets about three pages back or so, there's a summary. And the summary explains the way that the shapes relate to each other. I explained it in my notes video, but very, very roughly, if I draw it out, a curved line becomes a sloped line, becomes a flat line, becomes a line on the zero axis. This is the pattern that we're dealing with. So because of that pattern, we have the ability to predict what we should see on the velocity graph. A positive sloped line, positive slope becomes a flat line. Now, specifically, it will become a positive flat line. This is flat, which means it'll become 0 on the axis. Negative slope means we're going to get two negative flats. And then a positive means we're going to get a positive flat. So that's it. That's pretty much what we're looking at here. We're looking at a bunch of Like so, like so, uh, like so, and like so. What we're looking at here is a series of oops. Yeah, oh, it'll be like that. There we go. So what we're looking at here is a series of lines that are corresponding to the shapes we had. And now all we have to do is put all that together. So on your graph paper, this is where you will start to assemble your graph. Oh, I guess I should update my list here. Calculate the slopes. Then three, um, how do I want to say this? Um, display, oh, no, not display, devise. Ooh the shapes. You can actually do these two in any order. You could figure out the shapes well in advance to doing the slopes. It's completely fine. It'll work totally OK. So we're going to have both positive and negative on this graph. There we go. And we're going to need ourselves a nice horizontal axis. Now, the times are the same, right? All these times are going to be equal. So we're still going to have 0, and then 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Oh, that's a little too close. 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. And now here's the part that people tend to get a little bit confused with, because that graph went from 60 to negative 60, well, negative 40. And they assume that this graph will do the same thing. It won't. This graph here is going to go from 6 to negative 4. And this is a common thing that you see with these graphs. The starting graph may be very big, but the next graph down that you make won't be. So let's see, 2, 
4, 6, 2, 4, 6, negative, negative, negative. Okay. So now we have to assemble our information. So for example, we know that from the time of about 10 seconds to 15 seconds, I'm not moving. And that means zero on the graph. So I can put that one in right away, make itself pretty easy. There you go. I also know that I started off not moving, so I'm going to stick it down over there. Now, what we do is we say that for 10 seconds, we're at plus 6. So for the first 10 seconds, we're at plus 6, like so. And you'll see that I'm just putting some dots to attribute or to mark what has been happening. For the next 30, we are at negative 4. So from here to there, we are at negative 4. And we continue doing that all the way to 40. Then, for 55, we move back up to 2.6, so about there or so. Now, at this point, we'd have to figure out how to connect these dots, because they're just dots. They don't mean anything yet, and that's where the shapes come in. My first shape is a flat positive line. So, logically, flat positive line means that I have to connect like so. The only thing that'll work. I can't start down here and go up because that would be a sloped line and we don't have a sloped line here. So even though we said that at time zero we weren't moving, we're sort of ignoring that for this purposes because it sort of happened, um, we'll call it, before we were really paying attention. Realistically, in this context, I would almost not put time zero equal velocity zero because it's not really representative or reflective of what's going on in the graph, but I wanted to put it in just to be complete. Then, similar, we're going to get on the zero, we already marked that, we're going to get a flat line down below. So, we go like so. It goes all the way across. And then, we're going to get another one that's a flat line going to the same location. So, like so. And this is a key thing. A lot of times people will assume that they have to like, you know, for example, connect from here to there. But that's not what happens. There's no slope there. A sloped line, of course, would only exist if there was originally a curved line, and there wasn't. We could still tweak this a little bit just to make it clearer. We could, for example, put some vertical dashed lines here in order to make it easier to see what's happening. Remember, we do this just to make it easier for us to interpret what's going on. It doesn't mean anything for the purposes of like you know, the math or anything like that. It's just to make it simpler. So there you go. That is what one of these would look like. And you'll see that in terms of how I've assembled it, our first step, we cut up the graph. Our second step, we cut up, we calculated the slopes. Third, we devised the shapes. And then fourth, we point, uh, plot the points. And then finally fifth, which I don't have enough room for, I didn't do this properly. I'll just rewrite it. Fifth, we draw the curves. There we go. Lots of room. So there you go. That is how you do these things. The various graphs that you guys can work through are all located in your booklet. Um, eventually, you will get a fair number of answer keys that are available. So there's going to be some work solutions. But probably what's going to happen is for the first couple at least, I will be working through them with you guys in class, trying to show you how to do them and stuff. This was the first one. Relatively simple because there's no curves. So everything is all flat lines. The next graph on the list, it uh, looks something like uh, that one there is much the same. There's no curves. But the one after that does have curves, right? The one after that ends up being a bit more...
complex like that, and that's going to take some more time to do. Okay? So, give it some go. Try some practice. If you're having some trouble, um, send me a message, and I can always do another video showing how to do more of these. Okay? All right. See you guys next time.